Rode have just released beta firmware update 1.3.2 for the Rodecaster Duo and also the Rodecaster Pro 2. And this adds four key new features, and I'm going to go through them all in this video. Before I do, though, if you're not already using the beta, you can find a link down in the description for how to go about uh, joining that program and getting the beta for yourself. Um, I should also say that although this has just been released today, um, I have been using the private beta for a couple of weeks now, and I've had no issues with it whatsoever. So uh, certainly I feel confident in recommending it to uh, those that like to be in the, uh, the beta loop. <laughs> so with that said, let's jump into the first key feature then, uh, and this is that we can now you use Rode's USB microphones with the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Duo. And that, in fact, is exactly what I'm doing now. So I've got my regular PodMic USB. Uh, however, normally I'm using it over XLR, uh, but now I've got the USB cable there, uh, and that is what is taking my audio into the Rodecaster. So let's take a little look at that, shall we? Uh, here we've got the uh, the Rodecaster Pro 2. One thing I should note is that although you've got two USB sockets on the back of the Rodecaster Pro 2 and Duo, um, then uh, you want to be plugging your mic into that secondary socket. So we can basically take one mic in over that secondary USB socket. Once we do, though, uh, you'll see here on my Rodecaster, uh, we've got this only thing that's jumping up and down here on the levels, which is my microphone, obviously. Uh, and you can see there that the channel it is on is the USB 2 channel. Um, one slight difference with this versus XLR mics, or indeed the headset mic or any of the other inputs that we've got, is that you're basically using the onboard processing when using it over USB. So what I mean by that is if I go into the settings for my uh, my XLR mic, which is this channel one currently uh, set to zero, but if I go into the settings here, you'll see that we've got the onboard processing. Uh, and if I take it out of advanced, for example, in fact, let me not do that. <laughs> uh, you can see there that uh, we've got these uh, three uh, dials that uh, Rode added in for you know a simpler way of basically tuning in your audio so we've got that depth sparkle and punch but then you can always go into the advanced settings and change a, a lot of these other things such as noise gate and so on well it's exactly the same with the podmite usb uh, but if i just go into that one uh, you can see that if i go into the, uh, the 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 basic settings as it were we've still got that depth sparkle and punch but if i go into the advanced settings we've got a couple of them that are missing versus the uh, the xlr mics and that's because as i say you've basically got access to everything that you've got in terms of onboard processing on this microphone. So what we've got here is, I'll just turn my noise gate back on for a second. <laughs> what we have got here is we've got the high pass filter, we've got the noise gate, we've got the compressor, and we've got the aural excitor and the big bottom there. What is missing, uh, just to save you uh, figuring it out, if I come into this one, is the equalizer, the de and then also the panning to, uh, to left and right. So let's just go back into that. That's why we've got eight here, uh, and on this one, there are only five things. But we still do have all of the same functionality um, that you would have when using this over USB. So just note that, for example, the high pass filter is basically a toggle on and off at 60 megahertz or 60 hertz rather, as opposed to on the uh, uh, the regular mic. If I look at the uh, noise gate there, we've got the frequency and the slope. So uh, as I say, this is just to reiterate that you've basically got access to all of the onboard processing of this microphone. And that would apply with any other uh, Rode USB microphones that you're going to plug in. And that is just worth reiterating as well. It is the Rode USB mics that currently work with this as opposed to uh, just any old uh, USB mic. Um, so with that said, there is another uh, slight difference here that we need to be aware of. And that is in terms of latency. Um, none of the mics on the Rodecaster are zero latency, but, uh, you know, to, to, to be technical about it. However, when you've got an, uh, an XLR mic plugged in, you know, it's such that you don't really notice it when you are monitoring your audio. I'm sure there are people that do, but uh, generally I don't notice it. However, it is noticeable um, when using the, uh, the USB mic. So now um, that because my headphones are plugged in uh, to the headphone one socket there for monitoring, I am noticing that there is a slight difference there. Obviously, the sort of purpose of... Uh, this I guess is that you know it's to extend the functionality and so more than likely you know adding in a USB mic is going to come at a point where you're maybe adding in you know an extra person into your podcast maybe you are using the Rodecaster Duo and you've got uh, two mics plugged in already and you just want to add a third person in um, so in that case so that there is not this slight delay the way to actually do the monitoring is to plug into the microphone itself so on the pod mic usb for example we have the uh, obviously the usb and the xlr input but i can just plug my headphones directly <laughs> into the headphone socket there and then i'm going to be able to hear the audio from uh, coming through there so it just uh, removes that sort of latency in that um so that is just one thing to note if you are using the pod mic uh, or any other usb mic uh, there will be sort of a slight increase in latency that you may find uh, find it noticeable 
Incidentally, in terms of other use cases for this, I literally had a comment on one of my other videos about the Rocaster Duo and uh, Rocaster Duo versus the Rocaster Pro 2 and which ones I preferred. And uh, although I'm using the Rocaster Pro 2 right now for this demo, because I'm testing some other things as well, uh, the Duo is sitting over there, currently a lighting feature, but that is actually the, the, the Rocaster for me because I'm not doing a thing with lots of, uh, lots of different people. But in any case, somebody asked the question on that video about if you want to bring in a stereo pair, because this is one thing that we can do with the Rocasters is you can actually bring in two cables from the back, either uh, uh, two XLR cables or two uh, quarter inch jacks, and then actually combine them so that you've got a stereo input. Well, uh, actually this functionality now with the USB mics would mean with the Rocaster Duo, you could still bring it in a stereo pair um, over those two connectors on the back, um, but then also then bring in a, a mic separately. So uh, that literally came up in a comment just uh, the other day. Anyway, I digress slightly. This is just thinking about sort of use cases for this as well. Um, and uh, yeah, whether or not this will open up to other microphones in the future, I don't know. But currently, as I say, it is the uh, Rode series of uh, USB USB mics that this works with. Um, so with that said, let's move on to the uh, the next thing on the list. And that is that we've now got um, independent control over audio levels on the smart pads. So what do I mean about that? Well, let's come over here. If I was to uh, play uh, an audio track, let me just take myself out of this setting here. By the way, I should say, um, you've got all the same audio routing capability with the uh, the mic channel over USB as well. So if you want to you know, exclude certain things from the mix, you can just go into here, uh, go into outputs, and then go into routing, and then go into the USB 2. And you'll see that we've got this uh, thing. So if you want to set a custom mix for that, you can, uh, you can do that as well. So then, uh, yeah, the smart pads, though, uh, after that little digression, if I was to play some music, this is the intro music for my podcast. I can fade that in and out. Um, but what if I've got multiple different tracks here and I actually want to set different levels for each one? Well, let's just stop that for a moment. If I go into the settings for that particular track, so I'm going to tap on there. That is the settings for this uh, particular audio. Uh, what we can do here now, you'll see that we've got this extra little control here, and this is where we can set the volume. So you can tap on there and I can uh, just decrease that. Uh, so now this is going to actually play lower. So if I just start that playing now, You'll see how basically it's just at a lower volume, even though the uh, the level is further up. So this means that uh, obviously, you know, there are some things where you may want it to be louder, some things that you may want to be uh, quieter. And so we now have that control uh, and I can just actually do it from there. You can hear me increasing the level of that. So that is a nice little feature. Let me just switch that off. Uh, also related to audio levels, and we're going to talk about ducking because uh, ducking is this thing where uh, when you speak, uh, it is going to reduce the level of the audio. So if I just bring this in and incidentally, this applies to the primary mic. So for the time being, what I'm going to do is just switch over to this other mic. So now I'm speaking on uh, this mic and this is on the primary uh, primary XLR input uh, channel there. Uh, so what ducking is, is if I just go and play uh, some audio for a second, uh, where's my audio gone? There it is. So I'm just going to play an audio track. And this is going to come in a little bit loud, probably. There we go. I've got this audio track. And as you can see, if I'm talking, it's kind of overpowering me. However, if I turn on ducking, uh, then when I speak, the volume goes down. And when I don't, the volume goes up. And this is on this channel here. So you can actually see it in, in effect as I'm speaking, it's down there. But as soon as I stop, the volume has just come up again. And then the volume has gone back down again. So let me just pause that for a second, because uh, this is not a new feature. We've had ducking uh, for well, since it was released, I think. Um, but in any case, what we can do now is if I go into the settings for this ducking here, um, then what we can do is go into the edit menu. And here you've got the depth. This is basically how much it is going to duck by. So if I turn that up to uh, five uh, there, 3.5 decibels, that's how much it's going to reduce it by. So if I just play that music again with the ducking on, you can probably see that the ducking effect is not as great. It's still quite loud, but if I just turn this one up with the dial, then you'll see how it's actually reducing that uh, volume of that music more. So uh, it's just an increase in the uh, amount of uh, ducking or how, how, how great an effect uh, that is having. One thing to note is that ducking applies to all the channels except the audio on the smart pads. So uh, that may well come in a future update, but for the time being, if you're playing audio on the smart pads, um, the ducking feature does not apply to that, uh, but it's to all other channels. So there I was just playing some music uh, through my computer uh, from Epidemic Sound, and then that was uh, coming, that's where the, uh, the audio was coming from. 
So that is the uh, the docking feature. So we've done that three of them so far. The final feature then that I want to talk about is it now has full compatibility with the Rode Wireless Pro. Uh, incidentally, the Rode Wireless Pro uh, I'm absolutely loving. I'm just about to be uh, heading off on a trip to the uh, to the states, and I'm going to be traveling exceptionally light. But this is definitely going to be in my uh, my kit bag. So uh, the Rodecaster, sorry, the <laughs> the uh, Rode Wireless Pro uh, released uh, recently um, is uh, obviously a, 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 an evolution of the Rode wireless series, um, but the Rode Caster Pro 2 and the Rodecaster Duo can now access the uh, the functionality and have full compatibility with these. So incidentally, the way that you would pair these, if I just come back to this shot here, um, I'm going to tap on this one here, which is, uh, I've got it set to a Rode wireless device, but nothing is currently paired. So if you tap on pair new device, um, then what it says is turn on the uh, transmitter. So I'll turn on the transmitter and then it says, press the pairing button once again, and you can see it's immediately just jumped in there. So that is the process for pairing one of these microphones. Uh, go to here, click on pair, follow the instructions, turn it on, and then tap on it once again. Uh, I reiterate that because I did this during a live stream and, uh, yeah, and confused myself with two button presses <laughs> and didn't manage to do it. Anyway, so now it's working. So if I just uh, come over to here, this is on this microphone here. So now you can see that this is the, uh, the audio coming through from the uh, Rode Wireless Pro uh, transmitter. Uh, so the thing that that is opened up to us um, is you've got this, uh, this option here for gain assist. So at the moment, gain assist is off. I can turn the gain assist, uh, gain assist, so is set to auto. Um, and the gain assist is for, as you can see, uh, when I turn that on, it did actually increase the uh, the volume there, uh, or the gain rather. So you can see that now as I'm speaking, it's coming into this area. If I turn it to uh, dynamic, it's even doing uh, something slightly different there. Um, and then if I turn it off altogether, you can see that that is probably too low. So idea of gain assist is it is supposed to uh, to help you with getting the gain right without you having to sort of figure it out obviously you can always override so, uh, select uh, so if i just select gain assist as off and then i can just come in and adjust this here manually if i want the Rode Wireless Pro is uh, is a great mic. It's got the same onboard capsule as uh, the other in the wireless series, the Rode Wireless Me and the Rode Wireless uh, Go 2 as well. Um, however, it does have this gain assist, which it does incidentally share with the Rode Wireless Me. Uh, one thing about this as well, though, is when you buy this, it comes with so many accessories. Uh, and one of the things it comes with is the Rode Lavalier 2 mics, uh, two of them, in fact. And those do have uh, a sort of enhanced uh, capsule in them. So if you want a sort of richer, fuller sound, then using that uh, that lovely mic with it uh, and it also helps with obviously ease of positioning and everything is going to give you better audio um, but anyway all in all let me switch back to the uh, USB mic. Uh, all of these functionalities uh, and new features just mean that it is improving on what we can do with the road uh, uh, roadcasters. And uh, as I say, for roadcaster duo users in particular, um, this added functionality or ad added connectivity is, uh, is I'm sure, going to be uh, sh uh, really welcome. So, with that said, if you would like to know more about uh, roadcasters, <laughs> then I've got a whole load of content. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link to my roadcaster playlist over here on the right hand side so go and check that out uh, and i've got to just say a big thank you to all of my channel members channel sponsors and of course the take one tech academy members as well uh, you can find a link to all the stuff i've talked about today down in the description see you next time